Hello, Amanda Zavelli here. So I had a few entrepreneur thoughts. Um, first of all, I love entrepreneurs. It, we're messy as shit, but damn, we're determined, right? <laughs> like I never understood entrepreneurs until I became one. And now I'm like, I found my people. It's amazing. Um, okay. So as an entrepreneur, I've got 5,000 ideas in my head at all times, at least. Um, sometimes I wear the same top for three days straight. My hair is in knots. I'm, but you know what? Like, I'm sick of the BS. Like, I'm so freaking sick of people not showing up authentically. I get on camera all the time looking like a hot wreck. It's just the way it is. Because if I didn't, I would never show up. Because I don't have it in me to do all the things perfectly. I can't do it. I cannot do it. It's just, it's not me. I can't do everything perfectly. My hair is curly and crazy and I live in a humid place. So it's super naughty and kinky, curly and wild. So it just gets thrown up like this. And that's just the way it is. If you don't like it, then I'm not the person to be following or working with. And that's okay. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, some people like the pretty version and that's okay. Um, I can get pretty every now and then, um, you know, when I pay someone to do it for me. Um, but honestly, when I see other, you know, people, business owners, influencers, um, public figures, people showing up perfectly all the time, it makes me feel like shit. It really does. Um, and I don't need that kind of energy in my life. Um, it doesn't affect me the same way now that I just don't give a crap. Um, but it does, you know, if I am following too many people on social media that are constantly showing up perfect and that's all I see when I'm scrolling, it does, it still affects me. Like even when I say like, I don't give a crap, like there's still those things that we've learned through our lives that make us feel like, okay, like I'm supposed to be like that or, oh, I'll never be as pretty as her. Uh, you know, my family will never be all in matching outfits with the perfect decorations on their front porch. Like I, you know, I show up and try and put my energy in where I want to. And that makes me happy. So that's what I should do. If, if you're the perfectionist and you show up perfectly, that's fantastic. I'm not telling you to change. There are people who want that and need you. So do you, um, but I'm letting those of you who are not her, that's okay. I see you and I appreciate you show up, be real. Let your audience see the real you, unless your audience is the perfectionists. If that's the audience you've chosen for your business, then you better continue to fake that shit because they want perfection. <laughs> so <laughs> there, you got to kind of determine that, figure out, really know who your ideal audience is. My ideal audience has changed as my business has grown and progressed. And that's okay. Totally okay. Because I do what I want. Um, you know, if you've created a, a product or whether it's physical or digital, and it really is something that is for those perfectionists and you've spent your time and energy on that, well, you're probably going to need to stay in that lane <laughs> if you want to keep your current business. But I, I really feel like if your audience, you know, is other moms, real down to earth moms, um, then those of us who are showing up imperfectly, but showing up, even when we have snot trails down our shirts, you know, spit up, um, whatever, <laughs> whatever this hot mess has at all times. Um, we're super business on top, party on the bottom. This might look party, but what's down below is even partier. So I won't show you any of that. We haven't showered or shaved our legs in a while, <laughs> but our kids and our clients are happy. We feel accomplished. We begin and end our days with love and gratitude and we choose to put our energy into what really matters and sure do we feel like a million bucks when we finally shower and rub our silky smooth legs together <laughs> yeah it feels amazing it's rare but it feels amazing but we know who we are and we know that we can't do it all and that there's gonna be some weeks that those things just have to take the back burner and I'm okay with that I have a friend who cannot skip shaving her legs for a day like she can be like sick as a dog and I don't understand that phrase actually, but <laughs> I think other people at least know what I mean. Um, she can be like completely miserable, the world's falling apart, but damn it, she's shaving her legs. 
that's her. That's okay. She shouldn't change that because I got fuzz on me because that's her and it makes, it's something she needs. So like I always say, you do you. Um, so my favorite type of self-care, of course, is going to the day spa, spending the day at the beach, especially by myself when I can just relax and not have to, you know, worry about keeping someone else alive. Although the nurse and mom and me, <laughs> yeah, it never happens. If I see someone out there, like I have to watch them and make sure they're okay, especially if someone's at the beach alone. Like I take it upon myself to make sure that they're safe. Um, but, <laughs> but I still enjoy going to the beach. Um, no matter what, it's always a good time at the beach. I love going into the forest and hiking. Um, but sometimes the best self-care is actually allowing yourself to relax and not worry about the shit that really doesn't matter. So it may sound completely different to, you know, schedule a day of massages and facials and pedicures, which is like my ultimate favorite thing ever. Um, or just seeing, you know what, I'm not shaving my legs this week. So I'm going to throw on some yoga pants before I go out instead of shorts. Um, even though it's freaking hot and humid where I live, <laughs> but sometimes that's just what I have to do because that's all the energy I have for that type of crap. Um, and that's okay. So I'm not <laughs> saying to stop brushing your teeth or cleaning your body, but sometimes that 30 second whore bath, that's all we've got. And so we have to, you know, work with what we've got. Um, you know, I really struggle with calling myself a business coach because it's usually so much deeper than that. When I choose to work with clients, it's because we connect and I truly care about them and their business. We go deeper than just business strategy. I love business strategy and I've got a freaking bazillion different ideas to try. Um, but as heart-centered entrepreneurs, our business is a part of us. I love working with women who take their soul passions and turn them into a business to help others. But this can be so especially hard for those of us who are empaths and intuitive. When I was working as a VA and OBM, um, providing those types of services for these empathic intuitive women, it was both amazing, but also a huge struggle for me. I was in a place where I was starting to learn more about myself. I didn't identify as an empath or an intuitive a couple of years ago. I didn't really know what either of those things meant. I honestly didn't. I didn't know what they meant. Um, and I always wondered like, why am I different? Like, why do I not connect the same way? Like, why don't I ever feel understood? Um, there was all these things that I, I started learning after I became an entrepreneur and um, really started learning about myself on a deeper level. Um, so working with other women in business like that, you know, I would take on their business like it was my own and I would give it everything and love it so deeply, but that wasn't healthy you know, they would change something drastically. And it was a shock to me. It was so frustrating. I would spend hours completing tasks and then they would decide they wanted something else. Or I would set up, you know, a whole thing for them. And then they would say, oh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that program anymore. I'm not gonna, you know, do this anymore. And it was like, what? Like, <laughs> I just spent hours, days, weeks, months, like prepping for this. And now you're not gonna do it? Like it was super, super hard for me. Um, it, it really, it affected my time and my time is precious. Your time is precious. Time is precious for all of us. Um, you know, I, I gave myself too much in these types of situations and it wasn't their fault. It was, it was me. Um, I felt like a highly underpaid business coach because I gave so much. So I had to learn a lot about boundaries and staying in my own lane. <laughs> um, so important. I think we all as entrepreneurs have to go through that and learn what that is. Unfortunately, the hard way, um, but it's something that's important is staying in your own lane. I was, you know, being paid whatever, 20 bucks as a VA, but I was doing so much more that affected me on deeper levels. And then I didn't, feel like my time was valued. Um, and I've seen a lot of people, especially intuitive, empathic business owners fall into that same trap and feel that same thing. Um, and back when this was happening to me, I would feel upset and frustrated. Um, but now I appreciate those situations because they pushed me to the next calling in my life. Like, I, I knew what was going, like, eventually, I, you know, I figured out what was going on 
And when I, I started identifying myself as an underpaid business coach, I started realizing that I was giving so much more than I was asked to, first of all. Nobody asked me to do these extra things. Um, but I was, I was giving, I was giving and giving and giving. Um, so now as a coach who guides and empowers intuitive and empathic women, I thrive on guiding them through these types of changes. So the frustration, I really strive to meet my clients where they're at and assist them in finding the path that feels aligned. Um, I have one particular client right now who I give her advice, you know, week after week and she says, yes, that sounds great. But then the next week she hasn't taken any action. So we talk about it and I realize even though she knows it's a good idea, she knows it's a good plan that'll work. It doesn't feel right for her and her business. So that taught me something huge is meeting you where you're at and finding the right path. And that's so important and something that I don't see, you know, a lot of other business coaches. I still, I don't, I need, I need to find a different title for myself. It doesn't feel right. Um, even though that's what I do, it's so much, it's so much more than, you know, it's a certain type. And I think, I think what it comes down to is, is who I work with and how I work with them. Um, but that can be conversation for another time. <laughs> so telling you to do something a certain way because that's what the perfect gurus say, it's not gonna help you if it doesn't feel right to you. So remember that. If you take away one thing from this long ramble of mine, remember that. Just because the perfect gurus, the you know super rich, you know, whoever's <laughs> say, this is how you need to do it. If it feels wrong, if it doesn't feel ethical to you, if it doesn't feel like it aligns with your message, if it doesn't feel like that's what your audience is going to jive with, then don't do it. Don't say it. Take the pieces of brilliance that you're getting from these different people because it works for them and for their business. And that's great. And it doesn't mean they're doing anything wrong. It's not, might not be for you and your audience, your clients. Um, so what I, I wanted to also share one of my favorite quotes. You might have seen this if you've been following me for a while. Um, but one of my favorite quotes is, I mostly peace, love, and light, and a little go F yourself. Um, I only censored myself because I hear my child close by. <laughs> um, and I'm, I truly am that, and I live that. I also use that, I don't know if it's a philosophy, but that I use that in my business mostly peace, love, and light, and a little go after yourself. And I think the example of, um, you know, working or taking advice from the perfect gurus is the per is, is like perfect for that, like in your business. Like you can be peace, love, and light, but you don't have to say yes to everything and everybody and everybody's opinions because in life, you're gonna get a whole lot of opinions. <laughs> and you probably all have some sort of saying that someone said in your life, your grandma or your aunt or your mom, whoever, you know, about opinions um, and assumptions, you know, all those different things. We all have like funny things. Um, but it's so true. And I'm not, pre I'm not pretending to be perfect or to be healed. Um, I believe that our entire journey is a path of healing I'm far from perfect and I'm working on a lot of parts of me all the time, but I care, I love, I show up and I give my clients my best. And if I am just a complete wreck and I don't have my best in me, I will tell you that. I will say, I'm a hot mess right now. Um, I'm a wreck. I got your message. I, I hear you. I'm here for you and I'm going to respond but I'm not gonna give you a good answer right now, so I'm gonna look at it again in the morning. <laughs> like, I will be honest. Um, I'm not gonna pretend or just make up some random bullshit just so you, you know, I feel like I gave you something in that very second. Um, so that's a little bit about how I work with clients. Um, so if you wanna chat more with me, drop your favorite emoji in the comments, and thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you again soon.